Okay, in this example, we have another system that's in equilibrium. And in this case, it's a traffic light that weighs 150 newtons and it's hung by a cable. The cable's connected to two additional cables and we wanna determine the tension in each of the three cables. So the first thing that we could do is we can look at just the traffic light all by itself. And so if I just consider the traffic light, here's my traffic light, and I look at the forces that are acting on my traffic light, I have the force of gravity acting down, and that force of gravity is 150 newtons. And then I have this tension, T3, which is acting up. Now, our coordinate system has already been uh, identified for us in terms of our traditional coordinate system. And I know that this traffic light is not moving, so it's in equilibrium. So that means that the acceleration of the system is zero, which means that the sum of the forces also have to equal zero on this entire system. So normally I would say we should draw a free body diagram, but in terms of just the traffic light, there's only these two forces that are acting on it. So we really probably don't need to draw another picture, but we can use the fact that if I look at the traffic light, the sum of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero. And I have this tension which is acting in the positive y direction, and then I have this weight of 150 newtons which is acting in the negative y direction. So the tension T3 is just going to equal whatever the weight of that traffic light is. So that was the simpler part of this particular question. Next, we want to identify and determine what is the tension in the two upper cords. So in that case, I'm gonna look at this hook that's, or this, I don't know what you would call it, so basically the place where all of the the wires are connected together. And if I look at that particular location and I draw in the forces, there is a tension that's acting um, up and to the right, and that's my tension T1. And then I have a tension um, T2, which is acting up and to the left. I also have this tension T3, and I'm gonna draw it a little bit bigger in my picture, which is acting straight down. So I definitely have a situation where I have um, these three forces that are acting. They're not acting right now except for T3 in our specific coordinate system. So I need to make sure that I resolve all of my forces into their components. So in order to do that, I'm going to draw a horizontal line that follows our x direction. And I'll go ahead and I'll draw in sort of the vertical line that represents our, our y direction. Now the angles that have been given to us, the 30 degrees and the 40 degrees, those actually tell us the angle that the tensions make with respect to the horizontal. So tension T1 makes an angle with the horizontal of 30 degrees and T2 makes an angle of 40 degrees. And I forget which of the uh, geometry um, theorems that that is, but if you have two parallel lines and uh, it's intersected, th those two parallel lines are intersected by uh, another line, then the opposite interior angles are equal. So uh, after we've done that, then the next step would be to actually resolve our forces, our tensions, into components along the different coordinate system directions. So I have a tension that's acting along the x direction for T1 and a tension that's acting along the vertical for T1. And in the same regard, I have a tension that's acting along the horizontal for T2 and I also have one, I didn't draw that very well, but uh, acting in the vertical. So my goal is to determine T1 and T2. So just looking at this, it appears as if I have four unknowns. I have you know, the tension in the x direction for each and the tension in the y direction for each. But I can use those triangles, for example, the T1 triangle, which I'm gonna redraw here, 
and I can use the fact that it has these components in the directions, and if I assume that my hypotenuse is T1, then I can write down what the X component is, so T1X is going to be the hypotenuse times cosine of 30 degrees, because that particular component is adjacent to the angle, and then the Y piece will be T1 times sine of 30 degrees. And in the same regard, I could draw my T2, which is making an angle of 40 degrees. And if the hypotenuse is T2, then T2x is T2 times cosine of 40 degrees. And T2y is T2 times the sine of 40 degrees. So now that I have those forces resolved into components, I can redraw my free body diagram, and I can make sure to draw all the forces that are acting. So I have the tension T3 acting down, and that's 150 newtons that we found from looking at the forces that were acting on the traffic light. I have a component of T1 in the x direction, which is T1 times cosine of 30 degrees. And then I have a component of T1 that acts in the y direction, which is T1 times the sine of 30 degrees. In the same regard, I can do the components of T2. So in the x direction, I have T2 times the cosine of 40 degrees. And then in the vertical, I have T2 times the sine of 40 degrees. So now as I look at my free body diagram, the only unknowns I have are the tensions T1 and T2. And I can write down two equations that describe equilibrium, which are that the fact that the sum of the forces acting in the x direction have to be equal to 0, and the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to 0. So as I look at the x direction, I only have two forces in the x direction. I have the component of the tension, T1, that acts in the x direction, T1 cosine of 30. And I have the component of T2 that acts in the x direction, which is T2 cosine of 40 degrees. And that has to equal 0. So at this point, I have two unknowns, and I don't have um, either one of those values known. So the best I can do is I can solve for one of those components or one of those values in terms of the other. So I can meet, move the T2 cosine of 40 to the other side of the equation. And then if I want to solve for T1, I can divide both sides of the equation by cosine of 30 degrees. And that's as far as I can go. So I have to try to look at the y direction and see if that helps me solve this, um, this unknown that I have. So let's look at the y direction. And if I look at the forces in the y direction, I have two forces that are acting up, both components of the tensions acting in the positive y direction, T1 sine of 30 and T2 sine of 40. And then acting in the negative y direction, I have that tension T3, which is 150 newtons, and they have to all add up to zero. So I can write this as T1 sine of 30 degrees plus T2 sine of 40 degrees has to equal 150 newtons. So again, I have an equation that has two unknowns, and I am um, I'm kind of stuck. So this is a situation where you have to solve simultaneous equations. So we're going to use the fact that I solved for T1 here in terms of T2, and we're going to plug it in in our second equation. And so if we do that below, 
I would have plugging in for T1 here, I would have T2 cosine of 40 over cosine of 30. That's my T1 multiplied by sine of 30 plus T2 sine of 40 is going to equal 150 newtons. So at this point, we could choose to go ahead and put values in our calculator, or we can look at the fact that I have sine of 30 over cosine of 30, and I can write that as a tangent. So sine over cosine is tangent. And then I can write the rest of it out. Now, both of the terms on the left have the term tension in it, T2, so I can factor that out. And now, I can go ahead and put in my calculator what cosine of 40 times tangent of 30 is. Cosine of 40 times tangent of 30 is 0.4423, and then sine of 40 degrees is 0.6428. I can add those values together, and I get 1.085. And now to solve for T2, I just divide 150 newtons by 1.085 and I end up getting 138 newtons. So T2 is 138 newtons. Now I have to go back and I need to solve for T1. But the nice thing is that I already have an expression that relates T1 and T2. So I can use that and I can solve for T1. So T1 is just T2, which is 138 newtons multiplied by cosine of 40 degrees, and then divided by cosine of 30 degrees. So if I put that into my calculator, I end up getting 122 newtons. So this is an example where you have multiple unknowns, and the only way to solve this is by drawing our free body diagram and then looking at the forces in each of the different directions separately, and then solving those two equations simultaneously by solving for one variable in terms of the other variable.